iOS has a framework called User Notifications that does pretty much exactly what you expect. It lets us create notifications to the user that can be shown on the lock screen. We have two types of notifications to work with, and they differ depending on where they were created. Local notifications are ones we schedule locally, and remote notifications, commonly called push notifications, are sent from a server somewhere. Remote notifications require a server to work, because you send your message to Apple's push notification service, APNS, which then forwards it to users. But local notifications are nice and easy in comparison, because we can send any message at any time, as long as the user allows it. To try it out, start by adding an extra import near the top of contentview.swift. Import user notifications. Next, we're going to put in some basic structure that will fill in with some local notifications code. Using local notifications requires asking the user for permission, then actually registering the notification we want to show. We'll place each of these actions into separate buttons inside of vStack, so please put this inside your content view struct now. vStack, button, request permission, I'll do a comment here saying first, and button, schedule notification, comment second. Okay, that's our setup complete, so let's turn our focus to the first of two important pieces of work, requesting authorization to show alerts. Notifications can take a variety of forms, but the most common thing to do is ask for permission to show alerts, badges, and sounds. That doesn't mean we have to use them all at the same time, but by asking permission up front means we can be selective later on. When we tell iOS what kinds of notifications we want, it'll show a prompt to the user so they have the final say on what our app can do. When they make their choice, a closure we've provided will be called and tell us whether the request was successful or not. So, replace the first comment with this. UN user notification center dot current dot request authorization with the options dot alert dot badge dot sound. Then success error in. If success, we'll print all set. Else if let error equals error, print error.localize description. If the user grants permission, then we're all clear to start scheduling notifications. Even though it might seem simple, Apple breaks them down into three parts to give it maximum flexibility. The content is what should be shown, and could be a title, subtitle, sound, image, and so on. The trigger determines when the alert should be shown, and could be a number of seconds from now, a date and time in the future, or a location. The request combines the content and trigger, but also adds a unique ID so you can edit or remove specific alerts later on. If you don't want to edit or remove stuff, you can just use string to get a random ID. The easiest trigger to use is called UN Time Interval Notification Trigger, which lets us request an alert to be shown in a certain number of seconds from now. So, replace the second comment with this. Let content equals UN mutable notification content. Content.title equals feed the cat. Content.subtitle equals it looks hungry. Content.sound equals UN notification sound dot default. We're going to show this alert five seconds from now. So we'll say let trigger equals a UN time interval notification trigger, time interval five repeats false. We'll choose a random ID for it by saying let request equals UN notification request, identifier UUID dot UUID string, content content, trigger trigger. And we'll add that notification request to the system. Notification center dot current dot add request. Press the first button to request notification permission. Then press the second button to add an actual notification. Once your alert's been added, press Command L in the simulator to lock the screen. After a few seconds passed, the device should wake up with a sound and show our message. Nice.